Good day, fellow World of Tanks addicts. This is Grasshopper. We're going to take a look at the E50M, the German medium tier 10 monster. The E50M is a great tank, uh, high mobility, great ramming, uh, fantastic German gun, uh, like most of the German guns but uh, in fairly weak armor uh, at tier 10, so you need to be careful how and where you play this tank. Um, the lower plate is incredibly susceptible to punishment, as are the cheeks of the turret, so you wanna be playing this with uh, that lower plate hidden behind a berm or a dead enemy tank. Uh, we'll get to that later on in the gameplay, uh, but the profile in this tank I really like. Um, I like the angles, I like the ability to bounce shots if you can find the appropriate um, angle against the enemy. Uh, you can side scrape with this tank um, and uh, it, overall it's very effective at tier 10. I uh, highly suggest you play it with a, a, a platoon mate so you can focus your fire. Uh, but great tank at tier 10 and uh, highly effective when used properly. Uh, in terms of consumables, um, I always have a multi-purpose restoration pack uh, that you can use multiple times in-game. I use whatever food or drink is available for increased crew mastery. And in this particular tank, I have an additional repair kit uh, because I do take a lot of track damage the way I play it, side scraping and hold down. Um, I, I generally show them my tracks and don't show them that front plate. and. Uh, survivability increases dramatically. Uh, ammunition, you'll note that uh, the stock ammunition is APCR. I have none of it. Um, I fire heat in these battles. Uh, tier 10 uh, are incredibly uh, difficult battles. We have great players. We have tanks with incredible damage guns. And I wanna be able to put as much damage out as I can while relocating, uh, using the speed and maneuverability of the E50M um, relocating again and uh, applying more heat. Uh, equipment, I generally use ventilation uh, to improve crew skills. We use the uh, gun rammer to decrease loading time. I want to get as many shells out as I possibly can. And I want to be able to, to out DPM folks when I can. And uh, so I use the enhanced gun lane drive as well. So you can see on the tech tree where the E50M lies, Again, it is the, uh, the top of the Panther line. A lot of people struggle through the Panthers, um, but once you get to the E50 and the E50M, I think you will really enjoy the tanks. Uh, they are very, very delicate at times, but if you play them correctly and enjoy that beautiful, uh, that beautiful uh, ammunition and guns that the German tanks provide, I think you'll really enjoy it. What we're going to look at today on the uh, E50M armor profile is more about the angling of the tank and uh, the survivability of it in a, in a confrontation. In this particular instance, I am using uh, an app called Armor Inspector by Andrew Carpushin, uh, available in the App Store. Highly recommend anybody who uh, is taking World of Tanks, World of Tank Blitz, um, a little bit seriously. Uh, should invest in this so you understand uh, not only the armor profile of the tanks that you're fighting but it also gives you the ability to change the shooter and uh, change the, the the tank so you can put different combinations uh, in confrontation mode and see where you need to hit your enemy. Uh, it can show modules, it shows uh, the uh, thickness of armor, different kinds of shells, shell angles uh, a lot of great information if, uh, if you want to improve your gameplay. So in this case for the E50M, um, I set up the shooter to be an IS-7, which is a tier 10, uh, which you will often see in battles. And what I want you to note particularly is uh, all of the red that's, uh, that's available at this particular angle. So what we're looking at in this tank is angling effectively and making sure that this lower plate which you can see in bright green, um, that's your weak point. Uh, also, the cheeks of the E50M are really susceptible to damage. So in the video that uh, we'll be showing in the gameplay section, uh, you'll note that I keep that lower plate uh, behind a berm or behind an enemy tank at all times. Uh, another real important point is uh, the auto bounce angle. 
And for those of you who don't know what that means, um, anything uh, over 70% angle will auto bounce in game. So you wanna make sure that you're, you're angling your tank appropriately to take advantage of the armor and the effective armor um, as it relates to whatever you're fighting against. So you can see this shell is going in at probably about a 75 degree angle and that gives me an auto bounce every single time. It's actually 73 degrees. Uh, but you want to focus on that. Um, something else that you want or, or a good bellwether on that is to uh, to see where your where your gun is and where your turret is aimed. So you should be angled so that your turret and your gun are aimed over your left or right track right over the tip and that'll give you a, a good indication that you're about 70 degrees. Um, another thing on the E50M that you want to be careful of is the gun depression. What do we mean by gun depression? Gun depression is the angle at which the gun will go up or go down. Uh, the E50M has a limitation that it only goes down negative eight degrees. What does that mean for you in gameplay? That means do not set yourself up on a berm where you are trying to shoot down because you will not get enough gun depression to get up and over and then be able to pull back. A lot of the British tanks and some of the American tanks have, uh, you know, negative 12, negative 13 degree gun depression. And that is a significant difference when it comes to your ability to, to shoot down. Shooting up is not a problem. If somebody's coming up over a hill, uh, you can uh, shoot their undercarriage or their lower plate quite effectively. But uh, make sure that you are not using gun depression or, or getting up on burns trying to shoot down on the enemy because it is not an effective way to play this tank. Good day tankers. Today we're going to take a look at the E50M platooning with Crunchy the Ogre, one of my Triari brothers. Uh, you can see this is a tier 10 battle today. Uh, the E50M is a very very strong tank, has a great gun, uh, but incredibly weak lower plate and uh, the turret is also susceptible to damage so you want to keep this thing at very very strong angles and you want to keep it down if you possibly can and hidden behind cover uh, you can see i'm taking a look around for crunchy he's driving an is7 today uh, we always make sure that our platoon mate and i are focusing fire which means uh, we are going to select targets actively which you'll see on the screen and we will put two or three shells in them with rapid succession and uh, do a plenty of damage in this game. Uh, you can see there's a T-62A and a T-54 over on my left. Uh, we've spotted a Centurion who has really overcommitted to this position on the southeast corner of, of this map and he's going to go down fast. Uh, unfortunately our T-62A is also trading shots and is going to start getting lit up by the other red team members that are, are coming down the train tracks on, on this map. So uh, we've got a Jag Tiger over there, we'll have an IS-7 coming up over the hill, and that's where we'll start focusing our attention. Uh, you can see I'm, I'm hidden behind this berm. Uh, I really want to keep my lower plate away from, uh, away from fire, and that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take one shot from the Jag Tiger as I step out and uh, light up this IS-7 for Crunchy. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna take him down. Uh, one of their one of their best tanks goes down in a hurry as well. So you can see the positions here are are pretty strong. Uh, we have a distinct advantage already numerically. The E100 pokes up, and I put one into his cheek, uh, which is the the most susceptible part to the heat I'm firing here at tier 10. Uh, the next shot, um, he starts backing off, and I bounce. I should have uh, I should have aimed a little bit more to the right, but. That frontal, that frontal cheek on the E100 is where I should be aiming. Uh, you can see I'm taking a look over here to the right in just a moment. Uh, Crunchy's going to come under some, some pressure from, uh, I think it's an E3, one of the American, uh, American tanks. And I'm going to reposition uh, to get a good shot with him and focus our fire. Um, as he, he was getting flanked by that guy, so we want to take him out of the game as quick as we can. And then we should be able to wrap up the rest of these guys. Our E100 um, and the other folks have come across the bridge, and uh, we've got these guys really pinched, and they don't have much of an opportunity to get out of here. So uh, I'm going to reposition. I'm going to call out where I'm going so my platoon mate knows uh, what my direction is, and then we're going to start zeroing in on the remaining uh, targets and this game will be over fast. For a tier 10 game, uh, this was played perfectly, I think, by, by our team. Uh, we had some spotters out front. 
Uh, we had some, some big tanks that were uh, headed across the canal and uh, lit up the, the big enemies from the rear. Uh, Crunchy and I were focusing our fire. We got one more M103 to finish off right here, uh, but in short order, this game was over. Uh, the positioning was excellent. We did a significant amount of damage, and if you want to know how to play the E50M, keep that lower plate behind cover and use that massive gun and work with your teammate to finish these bad boys off. We both did about uh, 25, 2600 damage there, uh, 1900 in assisted damage, and that's what I'm looking for.